So there's uh, something magical about the number three. Uh, religion has its holy trinity, literature its three musketeers, comedy its three stooges, uh, racing its triple crown, and the universe its first three minutes. And in baseball, it's three strikes and you're out. Uh, in art, it's the three panel triptych. And in science, it's the Nobel rule of three. So the original will of Alfred Nobel made no mention of the number of recipients who could share a Nobel Prize. And for the first 50 years of Nobels, the prize in every category were given to uh, one or two individuals with only one exception. And that one exception was the second Nobel Prize in physics in which um, uh, one scientist uh, received the prize and the uh, other half of the prize was shared by uh, Marie and Pierre Curie. That was the only example of three people getting a prize in the first 50 years. The first time a Nobel in medicine was given to three uh, people was in uh, 1934 for the discovery of liver therapy for pernicious anemia, and not again until 1945 for the discovery of penicillin. And it was not until 1968 that the Nobel Foundation formally instituted the rule of three, decreeing that the maximal number of recipients for any of its prizes would be three. And following the Nobel footsteps, the Alaska Foundation adopted the rule of three in 1997. Science's rule of three is reminiscent of art's three-panel triptych. And the first triptychs go back to the Middle Ages when Byzantine uh, churches uh, were decorated with biblical altar paintings. Now the master of the modern triptych is the British artist Francis Bacon, uh, famous for his bold and emotionally charged human images that shock and haunt the viewer, much like the distorted figures of Picasso and uh, Wilhelm de Kooning. From 1944 to 1986, Bacon painted 76 triptychs. His favorite subjects were crucifixions, drinking companions, famous artists, wealthy businessmen, and screaming poets. During the 16th and 17th centuries, poets were celebrated and immortalized in portraits by renowned artists like Raphael, uh, Titian, and Velasquez. And in 1951, Bacon painted three papal portraits entitled Pope I, Pope II, and Pope III. But unlike the earlier artists, Bacon depicted his three popes, not as sanctified figures, but as anti-pope creatures in which the papal throne becomes the electric chair, the papal attire becomes gaudy dress, and the organ of speech becomes the aperture of the scream. The scream also becomes a double entendre, mimicking the shrieks of viewers who are shocked at what they are seeing. One of Bacon's contemporaries in the London art world was Lucian Freud. And Bacon and Freud, no. Bacon and Freud had a complicated relationship. They were confidants and rivals at the same time, pushing each other to greater horizons, not unlike scientists who work at the forefront of a new field, as you'll hear about in a few minutes. One of Bacon's most acclaimed triptychs, Three Studies of Lucian Freud, depicts Freud in a hellish holy trinity, tangled and trapped in a series of cages, sitting like a coil spring, ready to erupt and jump out of the picture frame. In 2014, this triptych was sold at auction at Sotheby's for $142 million, the highest price ever paid for an artwork at auction until last year when a Picasso painting sold for $165 million. Now Bacon used uh, the triptych format as a clever way to distill a complex story to its essentials so that it could be painted and told in a bold way. Does the triptych approach for storytelling have any relevance to the rule of three for science? Now, one of the strongest arguments for an upper limit of three is that it, prov it provides selection committees with strict boundary rules. Selection committees 
are composed of people with varying degrees of taste, judgment, and decisiveness. And without boundary rules, committees frequently end up including individuals whose contributions are more incremental than original, which dilutes the impact of the risk takers who made the crucial insights. Like a Francis Bacon triptych, great scientific discoveries capture the public's imagination when the discovery can be presented in a defined, engaging way. As you will hear in a moment, this year's last call awardees have made discoveries that are original, bold, and adventurous, reminiscent of the triptychs of Francis uh, Bacon. So now to the highlight of our uh, award ceremony, the um, Alaska Basic Science Award, uh, which will be presented by Michael Brown, who needs no introduction other than to say that uh, he and I have been working together for 43 years, the longest scientific partnership in history. <laughs> <laughs>